Hi there, my name is Craig Taylor, Solutions Architect at HT2 Labs. Throughout 2016, I have been designing, building and facilitating a MOOC, a massive open online course entitled e-learning beyond the next button. At the beginning of each month, we open up a new level, a new subject, a new topic, and it's usually around an emerging idea, tool, technology platform that we think L&D people need to be keeping their eye on in the future. At the time of recording this video, this course has been running for 11 months, almost 12 months. We're almost in December. At the end of each month slash beginning of next, I take a look back over my shoulder and I post a reflection video just like this one. And that video usually taps into something that I've learned about the subject itself or perhaps something that I've learned about the platform, the way that people behave, the way that I've designed it, or the way that I facilitate it. Sometimes those videos combine the two. As we've got towards the end of the year, I decided to take the November and December levels and actually merge them into one. So it's one big level covering two months. And I did that because I'm mindful of people wanting to catch up and also because we changed the onus of these last two months to be far less about me facilitating and guiding people and actually more about the person at the other end doing something, thinking, applying, making a plan. We made it more of a work-based type assignment and project. I gave people two tasks. One of the tasks was um, a reviewing exercise that I call the three, two, one task. And the other task was called your big plan. And it's that first task, the three, two, one task that I'm gonna be covering in this reflection video. So what did I ask people to do? Well, I recorded a very, very short video and I said to people, go back over the previous levels. In other words, go back to January when this course started, go look at each level. And I want you to look at three objects, three pieces of content from each of those levels. Once you've done that, I want you to comment on two things in that level. It might be replying to somebody else. It might be replying to one of the questions that I've posed. Make two comments and vote on one comment that you see from somebody else. Look at three objects, comment on two things in that level and vote on one comment from somebody else and do that for each of the preceding levels. If I'm being really honest with you, I didn't think this was going to work. I didn't think asking people to stop what they're doing and find the time to go back almost a year and look at stuff that they've probably already looked at. Engage in conversations that they've probably already had and vote on comments that they've possibly already done. I just didn't think it was going to work. I think I, I assume that people were so head up in moving forward and finishing things and moving on to the next thing that they'd have very little time for that all important reflection that we often dismiss. Boy, was I wrong. People flocked to it. It was great to see. In the back end of Curator, I can see where people are and what they're commenting on. I know who's in that leading pack. I know who's almost finished the course. And it was brilliant to see, despite them being a hair's breadth from finishing a year long course, people were still going back and looking at stuff that happened back in January. People were still engaging in conversation or starting conversations from things that took place back in February and in March. It was brilliant to see. I'm really pleased that I did it. I almost didn't do it. The reason that I did do it is because we looked at a level on spaced learning. So I thought it's, it's remiss of me not to try and engineer in some form of activity that taps into that. I was doubtful. I didn't think it would work. I almost didn't include the three, two, one task but boy, am I glad that I did. So what have I taken away from it? Once again, the word assumption, making assumptions. I assumed this wouldn't work. I assumed it would be deadpan and it, I was wrong, it worked. I've also made some assumptions that things would work and they didn't work or they didn't work perhaps to the scale that I'd have liked. So once again, assumptions is something that's been brought home to me. And the second thing, is it was really good to read people's comments on my three, two, one task saying, that's a great idea. I like the simple approach. 
I'm going to try something like this in my tasks. I think too often we think about spaced learning and spaced repetition, about needing some form of complex algorithm or some form of complex tool to do it well, some form of artificial intelligence. And whilst I'd love to have access to that, I also was able to prove that just taking a very simple approach, recording a short video, giving people quite simple instructions on what to do, worked. People went and did it. So my reflections on this month, once again, making assumptions is dangerous. And secondly, I hope, I'd like to think that I've given people um, an inkling into how they might be able to tap into the spacing effect without necessarily having to go overboard with buying new tools or learning a whole different sort of system. Thanks for watching.